As a holistic medical doctor, I know that inflammation is a root cause of almost every single disease, both occurring in the brain and in the body. And yet most people don't really know what it's about, how to identify it, and what to do about it. Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Mills, holistic medical doctor with a natural root cause approach to health concerns, and welcome to the Wild Wisdom Show. Today, I'm going to be talking about chronic inflammation and explaining the hidden cause behind your health issues. Now, what's important to understand is that not all inflammation is bad. There's two kinds of inflammation we can talk about. One is called acute and one is called chronic. So acute is when you have, for example, a cut on the skin. That cut needs to be healed. Maybe it needs to have some cleaning up of any potential infections that are coming into the skin. So your immune system is activated and it travels to the cut and its activity causes those visible signs of inflammation, basically swelling, redness, pain. And over time, that acute inflammation will go away as the cut is healed and whatever infection is there is cleared. And then it's gone and it's great. That's exactly what you needed was some healing. The problem with chronic inflammation is that it usually occurs internally at a very low level due to minor little cuts. And I use the word cuts, you know, in quotation marks, because usually it's damage being caused by environmental factors, lifestyle and diet. So things that we are exposing our body to either being absorbed through our skin, breathing in through our air, drinking in through our water, eating through our foods like ultra processed foods, for example, with food additives. And they go in there and they can cause damage to the body. And that activates the immune system. And the immune system goes there and tries to resolve the issue, you know, repair any kind of damage that's done. But if you don't change your lifestyle that's causing the internal damage, over time, that inflammation goes from acute to chronic in that it's constantly being activated. And because it's usually internal, it's very, very hard to know that it's happening. Over time, it'll start to express itself. So it might be, for example, uh, you know, inflammation in the gut. So you might get some bloating, some pain, problems with constipation, diarrhea, or both. Maybe the inflammation is starting to affect your joints. So there's joint pain. Perhaps you're starting to get low energy. Maybe maybe some brain fog if the inflammation is happening in the brain. You might start to get rashes in the skin like dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, acne. Those are all signs that some degree of inflammation is continuously being activated and the body isn't having time to step down, so to speak, its immune system response. So it's considered a low-grade chronic inflammation that continues to occur. And so the immune system doesn't shut off and it starts to create damage inside of the body that the body doesn't have time to recover from because the damage is ongoing. And this is why chronic inflammation is linked. In the research, you know, if you search this up, it's there to be found and many, many studies, it's linked to most common diseases today, again, in the brain and in the body. So very strong research for heart disease. So, you know, strokes, heart attacks, any kind of thing that's involving the health of the blood vessels, diabetes, autoimmune conditions. So where the body attacks itself, and, you know, autoimmune conditions involving the thyroid, the joints, the gut. Alzheimer's has a deep inflammatory component, as well as things that are less, you know, diagnostic, but still signs of inflammation like hormone imbalances are very much connected to inflammation. The thing about inflammation is that it's also been connected to accelerating aging and DNA damage. So even if you don't get diagnosis, what you may experience is that you're aging faster, your skin, you're noticing changes in your skin, your hair falling out, stiffness in the joints, stiffness of the tissues, maybe some muscle pain, hard time recovering from exercise, Everything just seems to be happening faster and at a younger age than you would like or expected. Inflammation has also been proven to basically be a significant root cause of cancer. It almost feeds the growth of cancer and the inflammatory signals essentially not only do they cause the DNA damage, which can then result in cancer, they can also promote the survival of cancer once it's present. Because remember too, the immune system is what's responsible for recognizing 
identifying and getting rid of cancer cells. We're constantly producing cancerous cells. The, the key is that our body should be able to identify those cells and eliminate them. But when you have a couple of driving forces, such as the DNA damage, which increases the number of cancer cells, and the overactivation of the immune system, which decreases its ability to do its other jobs, like cleaning up cancer from the body, you're going to get an increased risk of cancer. And that's definitely been shown to be the case. It also hurts not only your heart, but your brain. So there's a lot of conditions like everything from dementia to Alzheimer's, even components of Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis and other brain conditions have been shown to have inflammation involved. And it damages both the blood vessels supplying these tissues as well as the brain tissue itself. And I mentioned hormone imbalances, but when I hear of somebody who has these issues from polycystic ovarian syndrome, fibroids, endometriosis, menstrual issues like heavy, painful, irregular periods, infertility, all the way through to perimenopause and menopausal significant symptoms like hot flashes and night sweats that are severe, weight gain, problems with mood, irritability, insomnia, all of these, I start to suspect that there's a problem with inflammation. And if we can identify what's causing it, remove the triggers and reduce the inflammation, inevitably the person feels a lot better if not experiencing a reversal of the diagnosis. So that begs the question, what are some of the top triggers of chronic inflammation? Now there's many, but the big ones are obvious ones, or maybe not so obvious, but you know, as a holistic medical doctor, it's obvious to me, junk food, big one. So any kind of junk food, ultra processed food, and even ultra processed food that's labeled as healthy, because we're discovering that any food that has to have food additives added to it as flavor enhancers, stabilizers, keeping it like longer shelf life, those food additives are now being shown to cause low grade chronic inflammation in humans. So even if it's labeled gluten-free, organic, dairy-free, baked, natural, you know, all those key words of greenwashing, so to speak, ultra-processed healthy foods in that can include, you know, protein bars and all those things. We want to be very careful that we want to move more towards a whole foods diet because you will not find inflammatory causing chemicals in whole foods, you know, the kind that you find in the produce department, beans, whole grains, you know, good quality animal source protein or plant-based protein, as long as it's, you know, not ultra processed, even taking soy and ultra processing it to create very complicated burgers and ground soy. And you look at the ingredient list and it's got more than two or four ingredients in it. It's ultra processed. So that's the problem. Inactivity and overactivity have been linked to inflammation. So not exercising enough, but even over exercising. So people who do ultra marathon and Ironman, while it's, in, it's incredible and it's such an, you know, my dad was an Ironman. So I understand that, that lifestyle, that community, that drive, we need to know that it can come at a cost and we have to mitigate and do risk reduction techniques and strategies because it can cause inflammation to exercise too much. Toxins are a big one. So cosmetic toxins, looking at our household products, you know, put what we put on our scalp and our skin, how we clean our home is so key. Looking at what the water that we're drinking, are we taking too much alcohol into our system for what we can tolerate, especially as we age, that changes over time. Obviously smoking, drugs, and even certain medications can trigger inflammation. So we need to really look at what's coming in and how it's affecting our body and if our body does well with it or not. Stress is huge. You know, you can cause massive inflammation in the body just from acute or chronic stress. So the death or, you know, illness of a loved one can be very problematic. A job that is extremely stressful having expectations from your family, you know, a lot of caregiver burden, all of these things can cause inflammation through the stress pathway. So it's very, very important. And it can be a physical stress, such as from the food, as we mentioned before, or from poor sleep. So not prioritizing sleep, you know, that mentality, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Well, I hope that's going to be a very outdated mentality soon, because you will be dead sooner and with poorer health if you have that kind of approach to sleep. Sleep needs to be prioritized 
It's when we rejuvenate. It's when we do a lot of detoxification and clearance of potentially harmful things in our body. So sleep is key. And also hidden infections. And this is kind of an interesting one because sometimes I work with people and we work on all the obvious things. There's still some signs of inflammation going on, which you can detect on blood work. And the question is, where is it coming from? And so looking at, are there any hidden teeth infections? So wisdom teeth, abscesses, root canals with cavitations, you know, where you've had teeth removed or operative work done on your teeth, there can be hidden infections there in the jawbone. And it's a very hard place for the immune system to get to, but they it tries to get there. And so it activates the immune system in that chronic kind of way, but there's not resolution. The infection itself doesn't go away. So, you know, people who have abscesses in their underneath their teeth, for example, that's a huge issue. Or maybe it's a sinus infection. The sinuses are warm, moist places that certain organisms like to grow, like candida and other kinds of, uh, you know, organisms. And some people can actually develop infections in the sinuses, for example. So these are things just to keep in mind. If you feel like you've done so much to support your health and you still have signs of, in of inflammation, looking at these hidden sources of toxins, infections, and that sneaky stress can be very, very helpful and, and make big changes. So it's very important to understand that you can reduce chronic inflammation. There is always a way. That is my view of the world is that there's always a way. Yes, if you have had longstanding chronic inflammation and you are at the end stage of a disease, you know, end stage Alzheimer's, extremely metastasized cancer, all of these very difficult conditions, it may, not, it may not be possible to reverse those, you know, maybe it's too late. But at the very least, if you reduce your inflammation, you will feel better. So you may not be able to reverse your disease, but you will be able to improve your life experience. So it's never too late to take action to reduce inflammation so that you can feel better. And in many cases, the conditions can be reversed. You know, we know that there are doctors out there reversing Alzheimer's, Dr. Dale Bredesen, reversing diabetes, Dr. Jason Fung. You know, I could go on. You could find, you know, Dr. Walls for multiple sclerosis. There is hope. And I do believe in the root cause solution for many things. And so the key tools for healing is always basically what you're mom said, you know, eat well, move daily, manage your stress, prioritize sleep, and then other higher level things like reduce your toxic burden, look at what's coming in, support the detoxification process of your body. And if necessary, go in and test for infections, you know, getting a biological dentist who understands that and maybe is using a, you know, a cone CT scan to really look at the, you know, the structure of the jaw, looking at the sinuses, very, very key. So you may need to step out of traditional Western medicine to do this kind of investigations, depending on the training of the doctors that you're, you know, being sent to see or you're seeing. Yes, you may need to get more people on your healthcare team that are alternative or complementary kind of approaches, but that might be worth it for you in order to resolve that inflammation. So if you want to learn more and deeper, do a deeper dive, please check out my inflammation playlist. I'll put the link in the caption, which are the notes below the video. And I go into more about root causes, what are the signs, what's the blood work, and anti-inflammatory diet strategies, which can be extremely powerful. And so I'm going to be continuing to do videos on inflammation over time. And every time I do, I'll put a video into that playlist. So be sure to check that out. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at dr.patriciamills. It's the best way to support this show. Save this for future reference and share it. Sharing is caring and you never know when someone's going to benefit from this wild wisdom. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day, even your night. Bye now.